Okay, here we go. Part two. Now we're going to install the eyes. They're no different than any other animals. Um, basically, you just got to make sure that they're symmetric. Uh, the pupils are level to the ground. And you just continue the same way that we do any other animal. Of course, they're going to have a little bit of a different uh, angle, but uh, not too much. The head is a little bit, uh, if you if you notice, the head of the blue wildebeest is kind of like, you know, more uh, vertical. They hold their head more vertical comparing to, let's say, a deer that is holding his head more horizontal. But when I say there's no different, it means that the pupils are still going to be level to the ground. Yeah, make sure you use your level because that tells you that uh, if your eyes are up and down, so your eyes are going to be level both in like the same height from the floor. That would it be. So my first thing to do with the eyes is filling up the gap that you see between the eye and the mannequin with some small roll of clay just to create a solid foundation for the eyelids that we're going to build on top of it. Now we come up with a smaller roll of clay to build the lower eyelid. You start right from the front corner, going into the back corner of the eye, and feather out the um, the basically the clay so it has a very smooth tran um, transition into the form, and it creates a very smooth. Um, form of an eyelid. The top eyelid or upper eyelid, usually I use um, a little bit of a bigger roll of clay and if I still think that it's not having a smooth transition, as you can see here I add a little bit more. This is not for creating that crease in the eyelid, it's just building up more clay so my eyelids are having a smooth transition to, uh, to the mannequin. Now here I decided to add that little bit of a roll to the upper lip as well. The one that I like to always add. That helps us um, close the mouth or uh, close the lips when we are mounting them in a very uh, smooth transition again. Okay, quickly we're going to apply some more height paste in this area because we never put anything on. And um, I like to use a lot of height paste on my mounts. I usually squeeze a lot of them out, but I like to have more than less. So now we're going to pull the skin forward so we can pull that face over the mannequin they got they got a very different looking anatomy on their face it's kind of like a mix of a horse and a cow if you ask me 
got a long muzzle and a very uh, short or small mouth so they totally look different uh, if you mount them for the first time you will realize that how different they are there's such a giant head they got but they got such a small mouth and weird nose definitely weird nose I think it's because um, they can close their nostrils when they're uh, pulling some I don't know maybe weed out of the swampy areas or whatnot but it's definitely has the anatomy that gives you the idea that these things they can hold their breath pretty well So anyway, we pull the skin back, we hold the skin down with our owls, and some more height paste. When it comes to African mounts, I think one of the most important things is just keep taxiing your skin on the mount till, till you find the right spot for it. Uh, a lot of the wrinkles or a lot of the excess of skin that we have on African mounts, they're going to be gone or they're going to be basically distributed among the, like on the whole mount, just because you've been taxing it properly. You can use rollers to do that or um, use your um, probes if you have probes that you can that you can use to to stretch the skin back and forth definitely you should not over stretch it because over stretching um, is going to create drumming when the mount is drying so okay we're gonna sew the animal quickly here you don't want to waste a lot of time watching me sew Okay, now we, uh, we're done with the sewing. We pull the skin forward because back of the mount, we didn't really put a lot of glue on there. So we're putting all the height paste that we need on the shoulder part of the animal too. So we can pull the skin back. Do the same thing on the brisket area. Okay, you can see some extra skin is right there. Pulling the skin toward the back is not necessarily the answer. You can do that up to a degree, but if you pull too much, uh, you're gonna run into some problems when the mount is drying. You have to distribute the skin, the extra skin, all over the mount to the point that the skin is sitting quite relaxed on the mannequin and basically um there is no not much stretch on it because the stretch is going to create problems when the mount is drying it's going to lift it lift itself from all the low spots and then it's not going to look right and you'll be surprised when you start taxiing it like the way you see i'm doing you'll be surprised how much of the extra skin will be distributed properly without having too many wrinkles in the wrong areas of course we are going to have to lead that excess skin toward the throat area that we created some wrinkles and we're going to manage it right there but uh, also I mean when you look at your reference photos when the animal is alive of any kind of wildebeest preferably the same age or the same size because uh, the older they get they can have more wrinkles on them and uh, it lets you find out where the natural wrinkles are in that animal when they're alive so now I got that 
long black beard underneath the throat or black mane underneath the throat while we're gonna have to create a wrinkle right through them well it's gonna be a little bit challenging but possible it's not a big deal so what I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna find my clay grooves that I created and um, evenly I'm going to distribute the skin properly all over that clay area and I'm going to start pushing the skin in or basically tucking them right into those gaps that I created and uh, this is the time that you would appreciate you have put some clay in there because it creates your um, wrinkles quite nice with your tucking tool you can use that and uh, you can slowly just make sure that you do not push in a lot of or tuck in a lot of hair into the crease just the skin and if you push the hair into the crease at least you can pull them out with a pin or something like that so I'm gonna let you watch the rest of the video we're coming to an end for part two thank you very much for watching if you guys have any question please leave them in the comment area all questions will be answered please do not send me private messages because I might miss them and uh, your questions will be answered here and everybody will benefit from them so private messages um, I usually tell people to send me an, another message in the commentary of the video I really appreciate it if you like the videos Please uh, hit the like button and subscribe and share it with your friends, support the channel. And uh, we're going to say goodbye here and see you shortly in part three.